As you can see from the league table, Champions League qualification is secured before we even have to play Tottenham Hotspur in the league. So for the last two games of the season, we're going to experiment, rotate, give the youngsters a game and enjoy the last two games of the season. So this is the end of season four, guys. Let's relax, enjoy and plan for season five. What is happening guys, my name is Adam, I am a Super Swan and welcome to episode 45 of the Saving Swan series, the last episode of season 4 and like we mentioned in the intro, Champions League is already secured, if I can find the competitions tab, you know, we are 8 points clear of Spurs at this point, it doesn't matter if we win or lose, we've been knocked out of all competitions now, so the only two games we've got left are Tottenham and Middlesbrough both at home. So look at the tactics screen here. Maybe looking a little bit different to what you used to. So we're going to experiment in the last two games of the season. We're going to go for a 4-3-1-2. So two strikers up top with an attack in mid. The, de the defence at the back is Timo Horn, which I'm going to put him on attack sweeper keeper. Young, Akanji. Ross Pugh makes the step up from our under-23s. So he's going to come in as a central defender. He's done very well in the under-23s this season, bless him. So we're going to give him a chance. He's five-star potential, guys. So he could be an immense centre-back for us. So we're going to give him the chance at the back. Rika at left-back. Three-man midfield. Mesa, Lorente, Almiron, Mazella, deep-line playmaker and advanced playmaker. Career attacking mid, Milic and Nathan Evans up front. So we're going to see... How that gets on, we're going to give Ross Pugh, he wants number 4, but we're going to give him number 34. Just to say to him, look, you know, if you get better in the future, in one day, you might become a number 4. So we'll get this game underway. We'll see how the new formation holds up against a team like Spurs. Maybe not the best team to introduce it to, but I mean, we're going to finish 4th regardless. I mean, if you look at the league table, we could technically still win the league if we win both of our games. But all the other teams got to drop points as well, and I cannot see that happening. So I think it's going to be a fourth place finish for us this season. Something I would take, to be honest with you. Ericsson crosses it in. Oh, it comes off the crossbar. So Spurs get the first chance of the game. Rika to Lorente. Rocky Mesa outside the box. Takes a shot. Oh, it's just wide. Almost got the opening goal. It says we've been over on a midfield, but I don't really care about that. Ericsson crosses it in. Pulisic outside the box. Oh, Davison Sanchez blasts it over the bar. And to be honest with you, we're playing all right. We're playing not too bad. I haven't seen many highlights, mind, of our attacking flair, but... I want to see how the two strikers do more than anything. So this is a this is a, a formation without wingers. So Lucas is not going to get a game in this formation. But it's just something I want to try out against Spurs and see how we get on. So Young on the right hand side. So it's, it's all about experimenting, you know. We, we, we've got the time. We've got the, you know, we're going to finish fourth as a minimum. But Milic, Tarika, Roque Mesa is going to find anybody. He finds Correa. So, nice little passing going on between our midfield three. Finds Rico on the left-hand side. Milic crosses across goal. And Nathan Evans gets the goal. The 16-year-old wonder kid gets a goal in the Premier League. I'm, I'm optimistic about this formation at this moment in time. So, Miron, Mesa and Lorente playing well in the middle. Milic does do well to cross it across goal for Nathan Evans. And it is a tap-in for the 16-year-old Swansea boy. He is one of our own. Nathan Evans grabs himself a goal. Correa with a cross. And Milic makes it 2-0 from the free kick. And this is why we're in the Champions League and Spurs aren't. Simple as, really. So Correa with a nice free kick cross. Milic is on his own, no one's really, well they are marking him, but there's no one really around him. And our two strikers get the goals. And I'm liking this formation guys, I'm liking it a lot. We might go ahead with it next season. 
because I know like a lot of big teams are sniffing around Lucas, so I wouldn't be against selling him for big money. You know, if we're going to get like 60, 70 mil for him, I'll take that at this point. And we can switch to maybe a 4 3 1 2 formation. Because we need, I think we need something to get us higher up in the league. We need something. Oh, but Ericsson, Team Hall makes the save. We need something to get us that next level. And I think a change of formation might be it. To get three plays in the middle. We've got Rocky Mesa playing the Mazella anyway. So we've got to have width there. We're going to have Rika and our right back pushing up as wing backs as well. I might keep the defensive formations. We might still need wingers. Or we just move the DM from well from attacking midfield to defensive midfield like we have been doing before. Balorente, Almiron, so our two playmakers. So Spurs are really closing us down, which is going to create gaps for us. Lorente right across the pitch to Rika. So nice little build up play here. Just passing it around, keeping the ball. That's a decent cross. And Milic makes it 3 0. Two goals for Milic. I'm not quite sure what sort of celebration that was, but that kind of puts this game to bed. It was nice passing movement from our team. Young finds Milic and slots it in for 3 0. And guys, the formation's working. And it's against a top team like Spurs as well. I'm not sure why we're seeing the replay again, but we are. And we get a kickoff highlight as well. So the way things are going, although, yeah, the Man United and Arsenal haven't played yet, we could sneak into second or third, depending on how other games go. But fourth, I'm 99% sure we're going to finish fourth. And Timo Horn with safe hands grabs the ball. I don't think Spurs are ready for the switch in formation. I think they were expecting the the 4 1 3 attack. But Evans crosses it in. And Milic grabs his hat trick. And it's a 4 0 hammering of Spurs. And I, the formation's working. The formation is working. 4-0. I'm going to make some subs after this. But Nathan Evans grabs himself an assist. It's a tidy cross. And Milic grabs himself a goal. So we're going to leave Milic and Evans on. They're playing very well. Angel Correa is a bit injured, uh, a bit uh, feet to good. So we'll bring on Harit as an attacking midfielder. Good thing about Harit is he can play attacking midfielder. Um, and we'll bring on... Lorente's not playing that well. So we'll bring Marco Rog on if we swap him over Mesa. Because Mesa can play deep line playmaker. And Rog can be as the Mazala. So Zelinski to Deli Alley to Bernard. Crosses in for Kane, but Ross Pugh clears the ball. Oh, so we got two Swansea youth. Graduates in this team. Palusic crosses it in, and Sebastian Young clears the ball. And Harry Kane grabs a goal, which, fair play, Harry Kane, that was a decent goal. I'll give you that, my friend. That was a bit of a good goal. Well, watch that goal. So Harry Kane starts the move. Palusic, he does beat Ross Pugh. And Harry Kane takes a touch and smashes it in the top corner. Fair effort, Harry Kane. I'll give you that. Palouche just crosses it in. Zelinski! Spears are coming at us. Do we, I don't, I'm not going to shout anything. We're, we're playing well. Although I am worried the fact that Spears seem to be coming at us a lot. Palouche! They seem to have... They've gone into a higher gear, Spears have, in this half. It's a good thing we've scored four goals. So we're going to make some subs on the 75th minute. I'm a bit worried about our right backs and left backs that uh, picked up some yellow cards. Ross Pugh is 7.2. We'll bring on Montoya as left back. I know it's not your natural position, but you're going to have to play it. Because I'm worried about Rika getting sent off. 
But we're going to be going into the last game of the season with a convincing win over Tottenham. Pelucci's going to have a cross in to Bernard. Sanchez is a good slide by Young. Bernard. Sanchez. Outside the box. Oh, it's a, well, that's wide of the mark. And it does look like we are going to get the victory. And there it is. A 4-1 win over Spurs. We appreciate their efforts. Good job, guys. Milic got player of the match. He did deserve it. Swansea take their chances. Ooh, Sigurdsson's one goal away from giving us 500k, which will be very helpful. And it was a proud moment for Swansea and for Ross Pugh as the 17-year-old Swansea-born central defender made his debut for the club in a 4-1 victory over Tottenham. I'm going to praise Milic. He was superb in front of goal, my friend. And if we look at the table, we, we can still win the league. We can still win the league. We're three points behind Man City, although Arsenal and Man United haven't played yet. So, it depends on the result of that game. Because, I mean, if either of them two win their games, we can't win the league. But, a title challenge might be on. I doubt it. I very much doubt it. But, we'll see. So, we're going to go over to the last game of the season now against Middlesbrough. It's a week away. We're going to keep the formation. See how we get on against Middlesbrough 11th place. So, I will see you for the last game of the season against Middlesbrough. We've arrived at the last game of the season and looking at the table, Man United and Arsenal did win, so the title challenge is officially over. I think probably the shortest title challenge in history, bear in mind it lasted about, what, five minutes when we realised that we could mathematically still do it. But we do have a fight for third place. I mean, if Man City lose and we win, we've got the better goal difference. So there's always that to fight for. But we do have Middlesbrough who are 10th in the league. So looking at the tactics here. Not much has changed. We just get a bit of a rotation slightly. Montoya right back. Rodrigo Cayo. Pew target at the back. Marco Rohr comes in. Lorente Almiron. Correa in the middle. Milic and Evans up front. We're going to give it another go guys. We're going to see how the formation gets on against a slightly weaker team. But we'll see. Because it could have just been a fluke. You know. Because Spurs are free falling. In the league. They've even gone below Chelsea in the league now. But they have got to the final of the Champions League, Tottenham have. So maybe they're refocusing on other on other aspects of the game, not just the Premier League. So that might be the reason why we dicked them 4-1. But I just want to see how we get on against Middlesbrough. Because like I say, we're gonna finish fourth regardless. So I mean, like I say, Chelsea and Tottenham are like ten points off us at this point, so it's not the end of the world if we lose again this game. But Armiron in the middle. Oh, Correa goes down. And Middlesbrough win the ball back. I don't know if you can see because the, the table's kind of hiding it a bit. I'm trying to... Hang on. Right. Well, look at the formation, but they look. They're playing pretty much everyone behind the ball. It's very much like Anderlecht was in the Champions League. They just played everyone behind the ball. But Nathan Evans in the box... Can he get a cross in? He does. Oh, it's a bit of a kerfuffle in the box. And Marco Raw gets a goal. He is bucked. I'm slightly worried about the fact that he's bucked. But nonetheless, he grabs himself a goal. Starts the move off by finding Evans in the box. Evans sort of holds it up for a bit. Crosses it in. It bounces off Marcus Rojo from the looks of it. And Marco Rog is there to pounce on the ball. To make it 1-0 to Swansea City. But so far, so good with the new attack in formation. Um, the only thing that's happened in between the episode, because if we can relax, we don't have to talk about the game. Um, Lucas Moura has come to me saying that he wants to leave to join Barcelona. And I've told him that until a bid comes in, we're not going to discuss the matter. And he seems to be happy enough with that. So if we do get a decent bid come in for Lucas, I think I'm going to let him go. He's been humming and hollering for the last couple of seasons whether he wants to go. Although, Barcelona haven't actually put a bid in for him. So, until they do, we're not going to let him go. But with this new formation I'm thinking about playing, obviously we don't have any room for wingers. So, it might be that Lucas's time at the club might have come to an end. I mean, I don't want to lose him. He's probably one of our best players. Milic grabs a second. Um, so, yeah, if we get a decent bid in for him, we'll let him go. 
As far as strengthening the team goes, I think I'm going to be looking for an attacking midfielder. Because at the moment, Correa is kind of the only one we have. We have been putting Almir on there as like a backup, but I'd ideally want to play him in centre mid. So we're going to be looking for maybe like a backup or a young attacking midfielder that can come in to develop. Um, striker, maybe. I mean, as much as I like Milic, he's very much blowing hot and cold. I want to try and get a consistent striker into the team. Uh, I might be looking for, I mean, depending on the situation with Lucas, I might try and bring in a right winger as well. Because obviously Harry Wilson's kind of not been in the team. He did get injured. He did break his leg, I think, towards the uh, start of the season. So we are going to be looking for a backup right winger to come in to fill Lucas's boots. Because, I mean, if we do keep Lucas, which there is a possibility that we might, we do need someone to fill in for him if he does get injured, which we haven't really done this season. Uh, let me just make some subs. Who can we bring on? We'll bring Harit on for Correa, I think. We'll just do that. So, yeah, a right so a right winger, possibly a striker, an attacking midfielder, um, a defensive midfielder, maybe? Because, again, Lorente is the only one we kind of have. So it'd be nice to have a DM to rotate in there. Plus, he can play in midfield. Because with a three in midfield, we might need some more options. Defense-wise, I'm pretty happy with the defense, if I'm honest. Montoya's good at right back. Young's a really good substitute to come in. You know, he's a he's a half decent replacement there. Um, centre backs. I mean, Rodrigo Caio is good. Lascelles is good. I can't remember the third one. But him, Aki, I can't even remember his name. He's really good as well. Hang on, that's gonna bug me. Hang on, hang on. Uh, who is it, who is it, who is it? Oh, it's bloody... Where, where are you? I'm sure I've passed. Oh. Akanji. Akanji. But yeah, Akanji, Rodrigo Caio, and the Cells are really good at the centre-back. We've got Ross Pugh emerging as well, so he can be the fourth choice. I So I don't think... I mean, we've obviously loaned our loanee from Arsenal for the fourth choice. We didn't really play him. Alvaro, we didn't really play him, so we didn't really need him. Uh, so we got Ross Pugh as the fourth. I'm happy at centre back. Oh, that's a screamer from Armiron. I'm still not happy with you the way we you got sent off in the Champions League though. Um, so centre back with good left back. Rika targets pretty good. Targets a really decent left back option. I just want to watch this goal again. Oh, potential goal of the season on the last day of the season. Um, so we left back, I'm pretty okay with, and then goalkeeper, Timo Horn's an absolute beast, so we don't have to worry about that. I mean, Nordfeldt, we don't really play him, but he's a decent to come in. We've been very lucky in the fact that we've never had to rely on Nordfeldt, but, you know, he's a decent option. Uh, we're going to bring Marco Rog off, because he's booked. So, so yeah, I think it's going to be DM... Uh, so, defensive midfielder, attacking midfielder, right winger, striker. Those are going to be the people I'm looking for. I, th I think we need something. I'm going to be trying looking for a class players because we need something to get us up to that next level. Because there is a clear gap between us and like the likes of United and City. I mean, United showed us. I mean, they hammered us in the FA Cup semi-final. They, ham they beat us in the league as well shortly before. I and mean, they got amazing players in their team. I mean, don't get me wrong. We have good players. But we just need like that extra like special player that can make this team. Or if we can find like youngsters. Like 20-year-old, 21-year-olds who are like three-star ability but five-star potential. Although they will go for a, for a fine pretty penny if we can find them. Um, oh, the board also, they've already set the budget for us. We've got 60 million pretty much to spend in the summer. So we've got a nice chunk of change to spend. So I am going to be looking for it. As far as players going out, I've already mentioned talked about Lucas. If we get any decent bids, I'm I'm all I'm open for bids for players. We've got a penalty, so I'll be quiet for Milic to take the penalty. Go on, Milic. Well, that is why I'm looking for a new striker because of things like that. 
But as far as players go now, if we get a decent bid in, I'm open to offers from most of my players. I think the only indispensable ones I would say are Timo Horn, um, Nathan Evans. I think those are the only ones I don't want to let go. But everybody else, if we get any decent bids in, we'll let them go. So a nice, easy, comfortable 3-0 win against Middlesbrough. We do finish fourth in the league. Arsenal lost their last game of the season to Liverpool. So we were only four points off the league overall. That's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. So Man United did do, do the double. They win the league. Amiron's on form, but I'm still mad at him for the Champions League. We get given 32 million for, for finishing in fourth. And I've learned from previous seasons. I'm going to continue on until we get the news. So we're going to look at the goal of the season and things. We already know the budget's 60 million. So we don't need to do that. I've lost my mouse. There we go. So Lucas Moura claims footballer of the year. Well done, my friend. You have deserved it. 28-year-olds put a string of good performances with a 7.56 average rating. What a performance. He wins players player of the year as well. Milic was second top goal scorer. He was a goal behind Hernandez in the top goal scoring charts. If he'd have scored that penalty, he would have become top goal scorer. Because he'd had more assists. Well. And, the, and, and Marco Rog scored the second best goal of the season. So we'll have a look. We'll watch the goals of the seasons. So obviously I was going to be second. So this is the third, this is third place. Oh, that's a nice goal. Or was that first place? I'm not sure. But that's a very nice goal. So this is our goal. I think we had this on camera. I think I remember this goal. Oh, that's a tidy goal from Marco Rog. I think we had that one on camera. Very good goal by Marco Rog. And this is the third goal. Oh, they're all very similar goals. All very similar. I'd say the first one was the best one. Was that the goal of the season? No, it was third. There we are then. And Lucas Moura and Rocky Mesa are in the team of the year. So, I, and so okay, I wouldn't let Rocky Mesa go because he is like a, a, an OG Swansea player. He was there from the start. He made 114 appearances. Not so good in real life for Swansea. But he'd be another one I wouldn't want to let go because he is an OG. I think him and Kyle Norton are the only players left. From the originals. So Montoya is in the best 11. So Lucas Moura is the fans play of the year. Not a surprise. Marco Rog with goal of the season. We've just watched it. So we know it was a really good goal. Laurenti and Mesa the two midfielders in the middle. So Marco Rog doesn't make team of the year. Uh, target at left back. So to be fair. I mean Rico was injured most of the season. And Sancho beat out Pereira and Harit at left wing. That might be the reason why. Because they both didn't really get... Uh, a full season. But Correa is signing of the season. And Sancho is young player of the year. Fair enough. So the season review. Swans were expected to qualify for the Euro Cup. But exceed their pre-season hopes. By securing Champions League qualification. The Swans were one of the competition's feel good stories. Defying expectations. And owing to an impressive spell of form. Between February and March. That saw them move into third place. Were able to celebrate a job well done. So the game, the match of the season was a 5-0 at Norwich. Was that the st That was the first game of the season. That's twice that's happened now. First game of the season is the best game of the season. Chelsea beat us 4-1. Yeah, that wasn't very good. Uh, we used 26 players. So the fourth highest in the league. Dynamics are pretty good. So we're going to have a team meeting. So for next season, Champions League. Boom. Yes. The players are happy. Champions League is what we need. And I think that's pretty much it for the season, guys. I think. I mean, we've already discussed what we're going to do for sign-ins. Um, yeah, pretty much. So, season four's done and dusted. Well, let's go to the competitions page. So, fourth place in the league. Knocked out by Barcelona in the quarterfinal. Knocked out by Man United in the semi-final of the FA Cup. And the Carabao Cup, was, meh, we didn't really care about that. So, overall... I think a very successful year. Obviously, let down towards the end. Uh, that one episode, which was last episode of Barcelona Man United, kind of 
took the wind of our sails a bit. But, I mean, if we took that at the start of the season, I would have bit your hand off if somebody said that to me. So, pretty much, guys, that is the end of Season 4. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. And next episode is going to be the start of Season 5. So, with Saving Swans, we upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 4 p.m. GMT. I'm also on Twitter, at SuperSwanYT. Please tweet me about what you think of Season 4. Who do you think we should sign? Or what do you think is going to happen in Season 5? Hopefully, I will catch you at the start of Season 5. Thank you very much for watching.